Welcome to Motherhood Unstressed, a podcast for anyone who wants to let go of stress and anxiety and learn how to be more fully present in life. Each week, I'm speaking with experts in the fields of entrepreneurship, nutrition, mindset, sex, spirituality, and so much more. I'm your host, Liz Carlisle. I'm a writer, a speaker, and an entrepreneur. Through my own struggle to balance the demands of motherhood and life, I discovered that to truly be happy, we need to be present. Your journey to feeling less stressed and more blissfully present in your own life starts right now. Hey guys, this week I am speaking with Paul Fishman. He is a self-love coach based out of California, and the message that Paul shares today is so important. Yes, we're talking about all things self-love, but it's not just about the relationship that you have with yourself. That's obvious. It's more about how it impacts every other aspect of your life, from how happy you feel on a daily basis, to how well you parent, to how you relate to your spouse, even how well you do at your job. It's everything. So I think you're going to really love this episode, and like I say in the title, it can happen in as little as five minutes. So this is going to be a really empowering episode for you. I think, you know, what Paul shares is just so helpful. It's not just a lot of esoteric talk about, yes, we should all love each other. It's practical. It's helpful, which is, you know, the the kind of episode that I love to put out into the world. So if you love this episode as much as I do... Uh, please remember to rate us on iTunes, share it with a friend, and subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already so you get the new content each and every week. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the episode. And this episode is sponsored by Motherhood Unstress CBD. I'm sure you've heard what CBD is and what it does, but if you haven't, let me give you a little primer. CBD is short for cannabidiol, and it comes from the hemp plant, and it works amazingly well with your body to battle stress and anxiety, even pain and inflammation. And if this is something that you struggle with or you know, you're know you having issues with, definitely give us a try. You can find us at motherhoodunstressed.com and in stores across the country. And we have a whole frequently asked question section. If you're not really sure what CBD is and what it does, I've got you covered. Um, And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram at motherhood unstressed. Thanks. Well, hey, Paul, Um, we were talking a little bit earlier and I am so excited that you're on the show. Um, Your message and what you put out into the world every single day resonates so deeply with me because I'm all about helping others develop more self-love and, and through self-care, through ever, through ever, whatever that means for them, um, just creating that because I think it affects their families. It obviously affects them and it affects the world, you know, in a larger sense. So thank you for being here. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So I usually start with a little bit of background, but today I just want to kind of get right into it first with a question. Sure. Um, why do you, why do you think that self-love is such an important part of someone's life? Oh, that is a great question to start with. So I believe that self-love is such a, a powerful part of someone's life because if we are unable to love ourselves and have that foundation, of self-love, we're unable to really clearly understand what our purpose is, how we can give love to others, and most importantly, like how to just live our life to the fullest. So without Mm -hmm. self-love, they're really, we kind of are almost lost. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I, I say that all the time as well. It's like, you can't I mean, it's like that old cliche thing. You can't pour from an empty cup. You can't even relate to your children or your spouse or your friends if you don't like yourself, you know, Mm -hmm. if you don't have a basic relationship. So I so resonate with that. So how did you make your way into this particular niche? Because this is very, I feel like the self-love movement is, is strong, but I feel like it's still fairly new. So how did it find its way or how did you find your way to it? That's a great question, Noon. And I love how you say, how did it, how did it find its way to me? Because I, so I've been on a self-love journey for around nine years now and, and really wasn't aware that that's what it was until probably the last 12 months. And within these past 12 months, I've really like fostered the, the love and light that comes from within to a point where it started just seeping into every piece of my life and whether that be my relationship, my career and people just started gravitating towards me and asking me like, how can I love myself like you are? And I was like, 
That's a great mm-hmm. question. Like, and it turned into me just really like before I was doing self love coaching, I was in the fitness space and I was personal trainer, nutrition coach, group fitness instructor. And my message was always like, doesn't matter where anyone else is. It matters where you are right here and now. And that mm-hmm. was a big thing for me. And I would have people come to me saying, Hey, I want to work out with you. And then I would start personal training them and it would turn into, Oh, you just really want to help me, how, uh, have me help you figure out how to love yourself unconditionally. Like I'd be over at these, uh, housewives homes and she'd be like, Oh, you know, let's not stretch. T- let's just stretch today and <laughs> let's not work out. I just really want to talk, you know, let's just talk. And, and then one session turned into all the sessions and I'm like, okay, I, I see what you're doing here. Right. Right. Like I find that too, with my coaching clients, it's never about the 10 pounds. It's never about, you know, I want to do more self-care. It's always about loving themselves and just being heard. So I'm sure you were such a great sounding board for these, these women. Mm-hmm. And now a quick break with a word from our sponsor for Sigmatic. This is the Finnish company bringing you medicinal mushrooms that is going to help your immune system, even your skin. And you just put it in some hot water or you can put it in your coffee. That's what I do. If you use the code unstressed at checkout, you will save 15%. That's really interesting. So, I mean, for, I mean, obviously our audience is a lot of young moms and, you know, you don't even necessarily have the time to think like, oh, am I loving myself? Am I doing a good job? So for them listening, what's something that they can start to do today to kind of develop a self-love practice? Like they don't have you on call 24 yeah. seven. What can they do on their own? That is a great question. And let me actually want to share um, an interaction I had yesterday on Instagram. So I, I got received a message and it was a young mom and she was really just not feeling conscious of who she was. She felt very, very lost. And, and I don't know if you can relate and I don't know if any of your listeners can relate, but I know that when there are so many people relying on you, you can always, you can ultimately feel lost a lot of the time. Like, who really am I? And I said, I asked the question, like, what can you do today for just five minutes that will make you feel like you're taking care of you? And the response that I got yesterday, which I thought was really powerful, is just five minutes of silence alone, breathing. Mm. Because we forget to breathe. There's so many times when I'm in like um, a state of stress, a state of anxiety, where I'll realize that I've been holding my breath for who knows how long. Mm -hmm. So my takeaway from this is that if you can go into your phone, pull up your calendar and find five minutes, and maybe you need to coordinate with your significant other or the other (laughs) caretaker and say, I need five minutes of alone time. Can you support me giving that, like receiving that? And then see if you can just start five minutes being conscious of who you are, where you are, and just breathe. Mm. I think that's brilliant because so often we're like, "Ah, you know, we don't have enough time, but then like you're scrolling social media or you're watching, Mm -hmm. you know, Bravo TV. And it's like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, you do have the time, but it's like putting that, like you said, like putting it on the calendar, scheduling, you know, I need to schedule five minutes with my spouse to make sure that they know that they're on board. Like it sounds really like dramatic, but I think it's important to do that because it's, it starts a, a real intention around a practice. And I feel like when you do that, that's the game changer. Like that's when you're actually going to follow through because it's like, it's on here. Like I'm seeing it, I'm writing it down. Like I'm putting it out there into the universe. So I think that that's really brilliant. Start with five Mm. minutes. Like, yes. Mm -hmm. To start, there's nothing's keeping you from your self-love journey except you. Hmm. So what's been the most surprising thing, um, in your coaching practice, especially around self-love? Hmm. I think, well, the most surprising, but also least surprising is how hard people are on themselves and, Hmm. uh, um, and how it's so easy for us to forget how far we've come and, I just, so last night I had a graduation call. My program is, is a 12 week 
deep dive into loving ourselves unconditionally. And I had a graduation call with one of my clients and, and we were going through all of the goals that we set and they, they were like, well, I give myself a 70%. And I was like, okay, that's great. And they were like, mm -hmm. no, no, no. I wanted a hundred percent. I was like, uh, <laughs> uh, listen, I got it. I get it. Um, however, let's celebrate the 70% because you hit some major milestones and it's really interesting because it really just gives me this like telescopic view into everyone's anxiety and these unspoken mm -hmm. expectations we place on ourselves. So I would say that that is the, that has been the most surprising thing is how little we celebrate ourselves on a daily basis within our journey. Do you think, I mean, I, you know, often, you know, the, the people healing others are the ones that have dealt with this in their own lives. Is this something that you struggled with personally, like being really hard on yourself and not really giving yourself that much grace? I mean, did you go through that ever in your life? I mean, I think that it's still a daily thing that I work through. <laughs> it's definitely not past tense. I, I'm just more aware of it now. Mm. I, and there was so much where I was, I mean, a little piece of my story is I was not in a career that was serving me, but because I was making a good salary, I sacrificed the, the purpose piece. And mm. I just woke up one day feeling so emotionally drained that I walked into work and I was like, I'm done, you know, and I didn't have the ability to take a step back and maybe be rational about my decision. But what I did have the ability to do was realize that enough was enough. Wow. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like so many people are in that place, but they don't honor that feeling. They just kind of suppress it down. I would say that like 99% of us are in that place. And mm -hmm. the, the beauty of like life in general and just being a human being and, a, and on this planet is that we are all going through this together and we are all individuals. So if you were to introduce me to a person that said, no, I, I don't experience any self doubt or anxiety or stress, I would be like, okay, great. Um, and I would ask them this, I'd say, uh, is that just like your normal? Like, have you ever just taken a step back? Like, how do you, how do you experience life when you're on vacation? Because I have a lot of people come to me and they're like, Oh, I just need a vacation. I'm like, yeah, cause what's on vacation? We don't have a care in the world. We're not worrying about it. But then you always get those end of vacation scaries. So mm -hmm. it, when you're going back to work or going back to your family or whatever causes you stress and then you start experiencing it, but then we're so caught up and used to feeling like bad and that yeah. it's our new normal. So do you think just like, like you said, like taking five minutes for yourself to really connect, do you think that that's a good starting place? Or if someone is truly unhappy with their job or their relationship or just some aspect of life, how do you think that they can first, I mean, they recognize that they know they're not happy. So then how can they start to slowly transition out of that? Mm, that's a great question. And, um, so uh, I'll paint a picture by sharing a, a client story that I have now. Um, this, I'm just going to call him Joe. So Joe came to me and he married two kids and he was just like going through life because he had the mortgage, he had the kids, he has the wife, he has the cars, he has all of this, these things that he had to pay for that he had support. And mm -hmm. he was like, Paul, I'm not feeling like I'm doing something that brings me joy. And I was like, okay, great. What brings you joy? Well, I don't know. Okay. Mm. So then I take him through the process. I take him step by step, which includes the five minutes of time. Because if we're not taking most of the time when people come to me, it's because they're not taking any time for themselves or they think right. they are, but they're not. So restructuring our mind to understand what that actually looks like, taking time for ourselves, and then giving the tools that allow my clients to break free 
of this mentality that I'm not doing what serves me and more so coming into the, I am doing, I'm not taking the time to figure out what serves me. Wow. And do you find that when people do start this process with you, is the turnaround time pretty quick? Like, you know, once they are in alignment, do they start making like huge life changes or is it more of a slow process? So I like I pride myself in being able to kind of facilitate some great aha moments right from the get go. However, it's different for everyone. I've had clients who seven days into the program are just like friends, family, coworkers are noticing a shift in my energy. And I have others who it takes, you know, a month, two months of the, the, the three month program to really get into the shift. But the cool thing about working with me or any other essential mindset coach is that you have all of the tools in front of you and it's really on you to make it happen. And and that's a big disconnect that I'm finding in just this coaching space is that Mm. people think that they're just going to pay a coach and everything's going to change. It's going to be like, I'm going to be able to give you a magic pill just because you invested in yourself. But the real beauty is investing in yourself is that magic pill. Because um, Joe, the client that I was telling you about earlier, he said the most powerful thing was actually investing in himself to bring on a coach because he, that in itself subconsciously showed him that he was worth it and he deserved Mm -hmm. true happiness. I love that you said that. So you could just sit there and he would do the work. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It's like he started that initial, I mean, really like, it's so true though. It's like, so many people are like, Oh, you know, I'll, I'll pay for this later. It's too expensive right now, but really it's never about the money. It's about Mm-mm. setting aside a time and putting out that intention and high, actually hiring someone and saying, Hey, like I'm showing up, like I'm committing to changing myself for the better. Like, Oh, that's so insightful. Right. I never really thought about it that way. Yeah. I mean, I would, I, if I could, I would help every single person. But the thing is, is that if, your, if the client isn't showing up financially, emotionally investing in themselves, then they're not going to show up. I used to do a nutrition coaching program, which was a hundred bucks a month. And I was having a hard time getting people to stay on after three months. And it was a 12 month program. So when I shift that shifted and really like learned about what it takes to get people to commit, I was like, okay, this is, this is what this is going to look like. It's going to, it's going to take more of an investment because money talks. And if I'm putting all this money up front to change my life, I'm going to do the work. I did it myself when I hired a business coach, helped me launch my program. I gave him a lot of money, but here I Mm. am. I did all the action and that, and that's, that's really it. You know, exactly what you said. If, if you're not willing to invest, then you really need to start with the five minutes and figure out why you're willing to spend a thousand dollars on a new iPhone, but you aren't willing to invest anything when it comes to developing yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what do you want your legacy to be when it's all said and done? Hmm. What do I want my legacy to be? Well, my mission statement is to empower and inspire every living thing to love themselves just a little bit more. And that in itself is really just, if I could get every single person from my community to realize that you don't have to do the work with me. You don't have to do the work with any coach. As long as you wake up every single morning and are giving yourself permission to be okay with where you are, that Mm -hmm. in itself would be a really powerful powerful shift in the world because a lot of the issues we're having right now are due to the fact that we are comparing ourselves to every single other person. Mm -hmm. So if I just was able to see that shift in every single one of my followers on Instagram or 
especially all of my clients just stopping the compare Dashian game. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I love that, but it's so yeah. true. And that like, and if like the neighbors actually were truthful and vulnerable, you would realize that, Oh, you actually do have your shit together. You're actually doing a great job, mom. You know, like, mm-hmm. I think you're absolutely right. Like, especially moms. I'm so glad that we're talking about this. Like you think that I'm not a good mom or cause I work today or I'm not a good mom because I'm a stay at home mom. And you know, I should be setting a better example. Like so many mind games are going on, but mm-hmm. it's like when you take down that mask and you get real with another person, I mean, yeah. And you're right. Like, it's just, it's a constant comparison game and it's killing us. Like, it's just, I'm just so glad that we're talking about this right now. Yeah. Especially with all of the filters and the Mm -hmm. things that we're putting up on social media. It's, you know, like, uh, what was I, I saw this, I was watching something from a real housewife or something. My husband's obsessed with the real housewives. So sometimes (laughs) he drags me in and the, one of the housewives, she was talking about how like, it's so hard for her to get any photos of all of her kids, but She, they all know that whenever it's mommy's birthday, they have to take a photo. And she's like, and I use that photo for everything. But like, if you Mm. looked, you'd see, oh, look at all these perfect kids lined up. But like, she can only get one photo a year with these kids, you know? But it's like, so we're saying, oh, I wish that I could get my kids to stand in a straight line. Well, she could barely do it too. But she puts up that one photo and uses it on all of her holiday cards. And Mm -hmm. it's just, it's. And that process is happening and, again and again and again and again mm-hmm, all over. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm, yep. I love it. I love it. So, I mean, we kind of touched on this, but what do you, what's a key takeaway that you want our listeners to walk away from, from this talk today? I think that giving yourself permission to start something today, not pushing it off till tomorrow is going to be the best thing, whatever it is for you. It doesn't have to be a tip that we talked about today. It doesn't have to be anything that anyone else is doing, but close your eyes right here and now and try to find something that would feel good. Whether it's taking that time for your, your night and, and having a glass of wine. If that's what really fills you up, like commit to that. And I'm not telling you to go out and have a glass of wine every night. It's like, (laughs) Commit, commit to something oh. that makes you feel good. <laughs> yeah. Everyone self love is drinking wine every night. <laughs> um, but it's, it's like giving yourself permission to take the steps towards self love and not feeling ashamed that you don't have a practice set. That's okay. Mm. That is okay. You are doing great. You're doing your best. Man, I love that you just said that. Cause when you were talking, I just thought of my sister and she's someone who this just totally reminds me of, you know, she's, she's amazing and she's working really hard and she's constantly telling me that she feels like she's not being good enough to herself. And at the same time, not doing enough for her son. And you know, she's open about this, so I'm not, I don't feel bad about sharing this, but, Mm -hmm. um, what you said, I think, you know, I'm going to tell her to absolutely listen to this episode because I feel like she needs to hear that. And I think so many women need to hear that message and really, you know, take it in and, and feel that and then move forward because it's not doing you any favors to not be happy, you know, to not be okay and accepting of yourself where you are in this moment. So thank you for that. That was really powerful. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Okay. So I always like to end with some rapid fire questions. If you're ready, I'm ready. (laughs) Okay. Self-love is? Permission. Mm, I'm grateful for? My community. Hmm. Love is? Unconditional. And the world needs? More self-love. Hmm. And what's something that you've learned in life that you wish someone would have told you earlier on? I mean, everything we've talked about in this podcast, but I know I'm um, seconding that being, being who I am as a true individual is exactly what the world needs from me. Not being like anyone else. I spent Mm -hmm. the first 25 years of my life trying to fit into a box of what my parents wanted me to be, what, 
my boss told me I needed to do, what society told me I needed to be. And it got me 75 pounds overweight and into a financial crisis and toxic relationship. So this, and the second I realized that Paul Fishman is exactly the person that he needs to be, you know, who, who loves fancy shoes and loved playing with Barbies when he was a little boy, like, and loves to sing and dance. Like I'm just starting to bring that stuff back into my life now. I'm not necessarily the Barbies, but like the, the, <laughs> the dancing and the singing and people love, love it. I go live on Instagram and Facebook and we always start with a dance party and that's mm-hmm. what people show up for. And then they stick around for the message. So, but I suppressed that for such a long time in my life. And that, that's the one thing that I wish that someone would have said to me is like, you being you is exactly what the world needs. I love that. That's beautiful. And so true. And now I want to catch the next dance party. So how can people <laughs> find you Tonight at 6 p.m. Social? Pacific. Okay. <laughs> um, you, can, you, you can find me at Paul Fishman on Instagram. Um, also on Facebook, Twitter, although I'm not on Twitter ever, Snapchat, wherever <laughs> you go, it's at Paul Fishman. So it's my first name, Paul, last name, fish, like the things that swim in the sea, man like me. And <laughs> if you want to go online to read my blog or learn a little bit more about the programs that I offer, it's paulfishman.love.love. I love it. Thank you so much for your message. And I hope all of Absolutely. our listeners really take this in and embody it because it's so powerful and it's just so freeing so thank you yeah my pleasure thank you so much for having me hey guys you have been listening to the motherhood unstressed podcast i'm your host liz carlisle i hope you enjoyed this episode with paul isn't he amazing um i'm a little bit obsessed and because his message is just so true and i think it's something that we all need to hear and embody so i hope you love this episode if you did please rate it on itunes please share it with a friend and make sure that you're subscribed to the podcast so that you get the latest from Motherhood Unstressed every single week. Till next time, guys. Love ya.